it's time to hear the word of God. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I consider it's a blessing to come to the house of God to be blessed by the word of God. God being so good to protect us, deliver us, sustain our life, and give it a strength that we may all come and worship Him. And this time we are going to hear the word of God. I pray that everyone will be attentive and listen with the listening ear and receive the blessings that God has for us this morning. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us grace. We thank you because of your love. We thank you because of your abundant grace. We thank you for the richness of your mercy. We have come together to hear the word of God this morning. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will give us discerning heart and open the eyes of our understanding to hear God's word. And I pray that as the word will come to us, it will rest in our spirit to produce and earn the proper results required in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for listening to us. I pray that anything that will hinder the hearing of the word of God in anybody's life be destroyed by the power of God. I pray the Lord, the Spirit of God, will minister through me and bless every heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. This morning, our topic for today is use your gifts. I believe that every one of us have a gift. A gift that God gives, a gift that God the source, a gift that is given to us to be used by God for his glory and for his honor and for his name's sake. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 it reads, A spiritual gift is given to each of us. I repeat, a spiritual gift is given to each of us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. One of the greatest benefits of fulfilling and finding your life call is that it settles the question of what constitutes true sources. Many of us have a filthy or false definition of sources. Many define sources in different ways and different means. But what is true sources? We have bought into the idea that sources is measured by how well we do compared to how well others do. That is a recipe for frustration. No matter what you do, someone else would always do it better. We have strength and limited strength. And giving gifts, God gives to everybody as he wills or as he determines according to our several abilities. So by all means, somebody will do better than you do. That is how life is. But when you define sources in terms of God's purpose for your life, the standard change completely. Let me repeat it. When we define sources in terms of God's purpose for your life, the standard change completely. True sources is not what you have done compared to what others have done but what you have done compared to what God assigned you to do. That is here is where we define true sources. You are comparing what you have done in response to what God assigned you to do. 
not others have done. That is how we can look at sources and define sources. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. Then what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Jesus said he was successful because he accomplished the work his father had sent him to do in John chapter 17, verse 4. Paul could say at the end of his life, I finished the course in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. By this standard, ladies and gentlemen, by this standard, success may mean leaving a lucrative job to follow God's will and God's purpose or God's agenda. It may also mean using your talents for his glory instead of chasing fame and fortune. Whatever it is, once you know you have in your calling, you can stop comparing yourself to others or wishing you were somebody else. Understanding your calling is very important. Knowing, understanding your calling is very important. Throwing your life, or giving your life 100% into your calling is very important in your day-to-day -day life. Success is measured by how much you have given to the calling of God and how much you are doing and uh, fulfilling the calling of God in your life. If you have this mindset, I believe you will not compare yourself to anybody. You not compare yourself to anyone. You not wish to be like anybody. You are content. You are satisfied by who you are in God and the gift that God has given you to glorify Him and to bless others and, and to also bless yourself. Exercising your gift, three things is important. It must glorify God. It must edify your neighbor. It may also feel satisfaction blessed by the use of the gift you have in the name of Jesus. God's glory is very important. Chasing fame and fortune will lead to frustration and disappointment at all times. Whatever it is, once you know you are in your calling, doing your calling, what God commands you to do, or what God assigns you to do, exercising your spiritual gift to the glory of God, edification of the body of Christ, and you yourself is blessed by the use of it. You are fulfilling a noble task. You are fulfilling your vision in life at all time. And you must stick to it and believe that you can make it in Jesus' name. You can stop comparing yourself to others or wishing to be like others. It will lead to frustration, disappointment, and misplaced of priority. It will not work. You are a unique difference. Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything about us is different. And accept who you are. Enjoy the gift of God and use it for his glory and edification of the body of Christ. It will help you very well. The Bible says we are each giving gifts for the common good. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. We are each giving gifts for the common good. Only when you are using your gifts to bless others, Will you, will, your, will you experience true satisfaction? When you are using your gifts that God gives you to bless or to edify the body of Christ, many are blessed by the exercise and the use of their gift. There is inner satisfaction. There is inner peace. You feel content of what you have and what God has given you. And by that, many also are blessed. You are always happy. 
you're always rejoicing because there's inner peace and satisfaction inside you comparing yourself to others will never help you in any way comparing or wishing to be like others will only bring disappointment bring frustration a lot of step back and you come lost out of your track you cannot fulfill your calling ladies and gentlemen the most important thing in life know your gifts understand the gift you have and begin to use it to the glory of God is very very important <clears throat> because when you use it God is glorified paying checks and promotion are good but they can't take the place of divine purpose do you understand? Paying checks are good. Promotions are good. But they cannot take the praise of divine purpose in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, my prayer is that you will know the divine purpose of God for your life. You will not live as somebody who don't know where he's coming from and where he's going. It is not good to live just as that, just like that, without aim and purpose in life. Know the divine purpose of God for your life. Commit yourself to this purpose of God. And I promise you, God will never let you down. God will never let you down. It is very important. Only in your calling will you experience lasting joy. Only by exercising or using the gift of God in your life, whether you are a singer, whether you are a pastor, whether you are an electrician, whether you are a, a medical missionary, any gift that God has given you, do well to recognize it. Commit yourself to that gift. Use it to the glory of God. In using it, let many be blessed. Feel satisfaction at all time. It will bring lasting joy in your life. It will turn your life around. Therefore, your life here on earth has purpose. A purpose, I call it divine purpose. You don't live and walk anyhow. You know where you are coming from. You know where you are going. You know God assignment for your life. You have committed yourself to the assignment. You are determined to let the assignment be fully come to pass in your life. You will not be a failure. You will not fail God. You will believe that and prove that God is faithful. And God never make a mistake in giving you the particular gift. Calling you into that particular assignment. Because you accepted it and have it done for his honor and glory. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we here on earth? To enjoy pleasure? No. The most important that we need is to understand the divine assignment of God for our life and commit ourselves to it and have it done for God's own glory. If you do it, we will succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that Lord God will help you in Jesus' name. Amen.